In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this image with some props I've accumulated over the years, some household items, and a bit of compositing work in Photoshop as well. Then I'll show you the Photoshop document and we'll go through the edit layer by layer together. What is up everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Sean Mundy. I'm a photographer, a digital artist, I make music, but let's get right into this image. So this image is called Engulf. It's an idea I've had for a while, but I was really anxious to try it out. I thought the idea had a lot of potential and I was afraid I'm not doing it justice, but in the end, I'm actually really happy with the results. It's probably one of my personal favorite images I've made in the last few years, and that's saying a lot for me because I don't like the majority of my work, and I'm just really self-critical when it comes to my work. This image was actually shot in my living room the first few weeks of quarantine and self-isolation here in Montreal. I don't rent studio space or anything, so my work is always shot either in my living room or my apartment or outdoors on location. Isolation makes creating work difficult depending on the kind of artist you are, if you rely on a team or something like this. But for myself, I've been shooting alone for a long time and using tripods and programmable remotes, so it didn't really change too much for me. When I realized that quarantine and self-isolation was actually going to happen for real, I decided to go through a bunch of my ideas and to put together some that I knew I could do for my living room, and this was actually the first of that bunch. For context, this is the original sketch of the image. Since I knew I wanted the background of this image to look very barren and white, I hung up white sheets to use as a backdrop while shooting and I stood on drywall as well to make cutting myself out in Photoshop easier. I technically didn't need to do this, but it definitely helps in the editing stage if you actually consider how you're going to edit the image while you're shooting. So I would highly recommend doing that if you're not doing that already. Odds are it'll make concepts you come up with a lot easier to edit if you keep that in mind while you're shooting and you shoot for the edit. So I broke the shoot down into four parts. The upper body, the legs, the flag, and the flagpole. Shooting the flagpole image was the easiest part. I already had a flagpole from a feature I did a few years ago for Vice, where they should probably do a video discussing that actually. It's a bit old now, it's from 2016, but this is the image that they filmed me shooting. Um, it was a pretty cool shoot and uh, I'll definitely get on that sometime. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be able to see that once it's uploaded. And if you've been enjoying these videos and want to see more, I would really appreciate it. All right, back to the photo. So I shot a bunch of photos of the flagpole by itself just in case I needed it for Photoshop. I'll often overshoot when I know I'm doing a lot of work in Photoshop after just to ensure I have everything I need and then some. So I tried using some black sheets that I picked up over the years, but unfortunately none of those were really working for this project in particular. So in the end, I just took off one of my black curtains and I ended up using that. There are these rings on the curtain which actually made them perfect for this image because I wanted the flag to look wet and heavy as if the liquid itself was dripping down onto the figure like in the image, so it worked out perfectly. I just had to remove the rings in Photoshop, which was not a difficult thing to do. I used my programmable remote and shot maybe every two or three seconds and just held the flagpole from different angles, ensuring I'd have all the different material that I would need going into Photoshop and not relying on one specific image. If you're interested in checking out the programmable remote that I use, there's a link in the description along with a video where I show you all the gear that I use to make my images. Then onto the body shots, which were obviously the most difficult part of the shoot. So my idea was to paint my body from my neck to just above my knee as the base of the image, so that way I knew I would just have to take photos of the legs after with the liquid dripping down them. Then in Photoshop, I would just combine the images of my legs with the black liquid dripping down them with the body without the drips. I often use black liquid or black paint in my images, and when I do need to paint somebody or myself, I'll use non-toxic acrylic paint. So after taking a bunch of photos of myself painted almost entirely in black, standing in the same place, just tensing my muscles in different ways to have subtle variations, it was time to do the drips, which I knew would be a mess. A lot of people have asked me over the years what I use for the black liquid, and it's actually just chocolate syrup that I desaturate later in Photoshop to make it like pure black. So I made sure I was standing in the exact same place, and then I just poured some chocolate syrup down my thighs, and I spread it out as much as I could to make it look like it was actually coming down my body from where the flag was. For the drips coming out of my hands, I just put a handful of chocolate syrup in my hand, and I let it fall out, and I tried to time it with when my camera was firing off from my programmable remote. Then after showering dried acrylic paint off of like 80% of my body, and cleaning my floors from all the chocolate syrup from where it had fallen into the nooks and crannies and everything, I took these photos into Photoshop. So now let's go into Photoshop and I'll show you the edit. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. This is the final image as you can see. I'm just gonna turn all these layers off and start from the beginning because this image is, like I mentioned earlier, it's several different shots combined. So we're gonna go all the way down to the body, which was the most complicated part of the edit, and the most tedious. I wanted to get that done first and I knew that the body would be behind the flag, so the flag would be in front of it, so I wanted to wait to do that after. And also just to get the annoying part done first. Just gonna turn all these layers off. These groups, everything. Oops, the torso. All right, so this, all right, we gotta turn this mask off as well. There, so that's the original image. Certain parts of it are blocked off for obvious reasons. <laughs> Torso cleanup. This is basically just touching up the arms. Yeah, and 
I'm, uh, I'm alt clicking to see all the adjustments. So right here you can see this is just uh, spot healing. So I'm just taking parts of the image using the clone stamp tool over here. And like I said, it's using alt click to do that. So if you have a blank layer like this and you don't, act, if your adjustments are super small and you can't really see where they're happening from afar, alt clicking is your best bet to do that. And this is just brightening up, yep. just brightening up the shadows so you can see more of what's going on. So, all right, onto the legs. So I, that was just a matter of selecting the image. Also, these um, this white spot here, which you might be wondering what this is. I knew that the background was going to be white, and so in photos in Camera Raw, I uh, I painted in a higher exposure than the background. That's why this is actually one file. Um, so basically, I knew that this was going to be white in the final image. So I wanted to keep some of the details of the leg hairs and blend that in with the white background. So instead of having to go in there and select each hair individually, I can just have them match up properly like that. All right, so now we're gonna go through the legs, which there's a bit more compositing going on here. So I just didn't move, like I said earlier, and I just uh, found the images that matched up perfectly. So here, we just got a bunch of trips going on. Is a toe in there? I don't know how that's happening. Okay, so it's uh, left over. I didn't mask it in, I guess. Yeah, exactly. For some reason, I left that out. <laughs> It'll make sense later. Brightening that up again. Taking the right leg. And obviously, this is chocolate syrup, like I mentioned. It's still brown, but we're going to desaturate that shortly. A little extension. And obviously, with all these drips, there would be more puddles than just that so I extended the puddles a bit brought in different images of the puddles as you can see on the other side as well and then I just ex filled in the blanks or filled in the empty spots rather again with some spot healing over here and human saturation desaturating the puddles this might have been after doing most of the work Burn. I imagine that's in the torso somewhere. Yep. Arms and probably the hands. Yeah, just a bit of dirt burning going on. Filling in the blanks, uh, filling in the spots where the paint wasn't perfect. Some round spots on my arms and everything like that. Human saturation. I believe this is where I begin to desaturate the rest of the chocolate syrup. Probably the reds. Yep. Cool. So I'm desaturating here. Oh yeah, huge difference already. It gets more finessed along the way, but that, that already is a huge difference. There's some small details, but I get to that later. Same thing again. Darkening. Yep, just bring those blacks all the way down. Don't delete. Okay, just doing some brightening. The curves layer. D and B. Dodging and burning. I use a 50% gray layer when I do my dodging and burning. So basically, it would just go edit, fill, 50% gray up here. It won't be that automatically. You'll have to select for it. 50% gray. Okay. And then if you set it to soft light, when you use the dodge and burn tools here, You'll have a dedicated layer for that. Instead of, I mean, you can do this multiple different ways. I like using a 50% gray layer. Um, you can just do curves as well and mask everything in, but then you'd have to have two curves layers, one for dodging, one for burning, but that's just how I like to work. There's a thousand different ways to do anything in Photoshop. Lower highlight by an arm. Yeah. Just taking those down a bit. Still some details, but I didn't want too much. Raise highlights. Raising highs of everything it looks like. No masking going on, or there might be some. No, it's just a default all white mask. Clip side leg hairs. Where's this happening? Down there. Again, I was all clicking to do that. There's, oh, okay, it's down there. I just saw it pop up. Yeah, so again. Cleaning. Oh yeah, you can see that there's actually some leftover 
yellow from the background not being pure white so with the curves layer i'm just doing that and there's still some detail in the hairs as well so and i'm also zoomed in quite a bit like that was at like almost 250 just to see that so a lot of detail is being preserved even in doing that I'm zoom back out raise highlight and arm and die and then the mask which is just it's a bit sloppy because of these spots I knew they would be blended in with the background so I didn't need to make it super clean with the hairs like I said it makes it a bit easier instead of having to select each individual like hair things like that all right so that's the body and the puddle and some of the desaturating isn't quite done yet but we're gonna get to that in a second fixing the thigh gap there's just a little leftover here it made no sense so I just filled in the thigh gap fixing legs transition again here there's just some spots that are standing out it wasn't it's not the worst thing in the world but obviously the idea is to have the, the idea was that the black liquid would be dripping downwards so it would make no sense for there to be liquid below this so you gotta fill that in and i think for that i probably just did some spot healing yep clone snapping same thing fixing a brown liquid all right so yeah now everything is desaturated of these a few saturation again most likely you just oh string all of it down i guess the selection is oh that's just for a little bit okay yeah there was just one very brown spot that didn't get touched by the other masks and i darkened it hue and saturation again desaturating everything but it left a bit of a weird gray so then here is most likely gonna be darkening yep yep cool and then here again a more darkening just around the feet where they meet the, bl the black liquid cleaning shine above feet oh, okay yeah, just the the uh, reflections from my light that I used so that's fixing the red liquid hand drips nice little details as I said earlier I just put the chocolate syrup on my hand and let it fall down so got a bunch of different photos here probably copied a few of them over not going to turn these masks off just in case <laughs> um, so we're just dripping more drips more drips and I basically tried to time the drips with my self timer that I had programmed so I, I was watching it go off in sequence so if I knew it, was, it would be going off every four or five seconds or something I would put the drips in my hand and try to just shake my hand downwards to get them to fall out at the same time and then just mask them in there's a little guy up here I don't know what this layer is. I remember going through this document beforehand and that's why I put the question marks, but I'm alt clicking right now and I don't see anything. So I could delete it, but I, I'm not going to just because it doesn't take up any space and who knows, why not? Layer you didn't copy. Oh, it's a little, little guy. And that looks like there's a mistake here, but boom, covered it up. Another drip. The little guy, yep, tiny tiny. So this is, a lot of this is just decision making as well, because you have to basically, you're, you're trying to replicate randomness, which is pretty impossible. So a lot of this is just guessing and testing and just thinking, like making the actual masks themselves, not a big deal. It's the actual choosing of, okay, where's the drip gonna go, kind of thing, and how are you gonna make it fall? Oh, this, this one, okay, yeah. And then similarly to what I did before, the white clipping Zooming in. I just turned the whites up with this so I didn't actually have to make a mask you could make a mask and it wouldn't take that long but this just makes it a bit easier and a bit faster if you already know that you're gonna have a white background Do -do -do -do. one last one I believe yeah and then I did the white clipping method again turn all the way up now we're done with the body, so now we're at the flag. So let's turn all this off. Actual flag. Yeah, if you don't name your layers and stuff like that, when you have projects like this, things can get real messy real quick. All 
Right, so now we're in the actual flag folder. Turning all these off. So it's the first image, just the actual good shape of the flag falling. It had this nice ripple that went straight down, which I really liked. Obviously you can see there's some things here, the rings, and those will be gone momentarily. Now bringing in the actual pole. Extending it, darken the flag. This is the burn layer. Yep. The mask is there. So then this is probably the more dark one. I can't really see actually. I can see something here, but I don't <laughs> I can't tell what's going on. Alright, well that's obviously getting rid of the hoops from the curtain. There's one left, but that we'll get rid of in a second. Bright and black. Just bringing out some of those details a bit. I didn't want it to be a solid mass of black. I wanted there to be some details in the, the sheen of the flag and also just the material in general. So here we're doing some frequency separation. So this FS is here. Frequency separation is basically just isolating the color, C, and the texture, T, of any file, or any image rather. So this is just the color information, this is the texture information. So with that you can basically do spot healing a bit more efficiently so you don't have to worry about combining all the colors properly together or the textures, you can isolate them both. And the before and after, you can see that I'm getting rid of some wrinkles here. These are just curtains that were on my wall. Oops. There you go. You can see this. Oh, I've got to turn that back on. My mistake. So you can see we're getting rid of some of that, some stuff down here. Alright, let's zoom back out. The next layer is spot heel pole. Where's that happening? Just the little guy right here. It's cleaning up a spot. Yep, just a tiny little guy. Alright, let's turn that back on. Let's scroll up. This is more darkening, most likely. Get the mask to not apply. Okay, yeah, so it's just darkening up here. Feel close so you can see that there's a bit of darkening going on, but I wanted to keep this sheen, so that's why the mask is like that. A little highlight on pole. Where? Down there. Yeah, this highlight was just a bit intense. And then this is most likely doing the same thing. Yep, turning it down a bit. Alright, so we're almost done now. Pull clean up. Clean up. <laughs> Can't spell. Looks like some stuff here just being cleaned up. Oops. Oh yeah, huge difference. <laughs> some of the paint, just, just um, I actually had to extend the, the pole more than I ever had before for this image. And so a lot of the paint wasn't actually in the area originally. Yeah, you can see there's spots there. Clean pull highlight. Some more little tiny details going on here. Very subtle, but the lines weren't matching up perfectly before, so I made them match up perfectly. Brighten shadows. Yep, just bringing out the details a bit more again. So that's the flag. And then when I have images with uh, white backgrounds, I like adding a bit of noise to it just because it adds texture instead of it being a pure white and you can't really see it right now because I haven't darkened them yet. Let's go to zoom over. Oh, come on. This project is quite large. It'll be more apparent once I darken the, the whites. So here we have another frequency separation going on, most likely cleaning up the flag again from the mask. You can kind of see it's a flag shape. This project is lagging a bit because it is quite large. It says 11.1 .1 gigs here, and I'm not sure if that's the working uh, size or the actual size. I have a feeling it's a bit smaller than that, but either way, it's a giant file. All of these, all of the files that I'm using are 40 megapixel images, so when you do compositing work like that, it makes for giant files. This is probably like 20 to 30 separate or copies of raw files, so. You got 20 or 30, 40 megapixel images in one Photoshop document. So that's why my computer is good, but this is a giant file regardless. So FS. 
Oh yeah, you can see this is calming down the highlights there and just brightening that up again because I really like that sheen. Yeah, it's very subtle. A lot of these edits are very subtle. Brighten flag again. Lower white background. There you go. So now you can see the actual um, that the white here is this is a bit darker than the pure white. And when you're editing images that are a lot of uh, that are monochromatic, so there's a lot of uh, whites and blacks in them. If you want to check for any color casts or anything like that, or to compare like the uh, black values of your image to a pure black, if you put it right next to each other, it's a really great way of doing that. So I have my custom set up to white, so you can see it's a bit grayer. And if you zoom in, you can see there's a bit of texture, very subtle. And then here, oh, there's more texture in this one. Okay, that's I apply it to this layer. So this was an update I did recently. I realized that I didn't. Um, I'm trying to zoom out. For the puddle at the feet, there was a few mistakes that I forgot to clean up in the first edit. Because this this is a lot of time. This is a at least like 15 to 25 hours of work. Still just trying to zoom down here. So this is the updated version. The old version had some spots here that were missing some masks. So I'm cleaning up around the feet there. So that is how I edited this image. Thanks for watching this far and I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this image. If you'd like to check out more of my work, you can check the description for links to my socials, my prints, my website, all that good stuff. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos like this and a lot more. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. See you!